Hi there, it's Nicole for Honey Bee Stamps, and today I'm sharing a card with the brand new Acorn Sisters Stamps and Coordinating Dies, a beautiful fall themed set with these three darling little girls and tons of mix and match sentiments, perfect for lots of different occasions. I'm gonna create this blessings card with a plastic overlay. The girls and the rest of the scene take up so much of the card. I have really been enjoying doing overlays lately so that the greeting still takes a prominent spot, but you don't lose any of the fabulous images. I'm stamping the girls, the bird, some leaves, and a pumpkin from the Acorn Sisters stamp set on Bristol Smooth cardstock using VersaFine ink. I'm using the Misty to do this so I can stamp it a couple times. Go ahead and clean up my stamps really quick with the stamp chamois and put those away. The VersaFine ink is a pigment ink, so I am going to hit my images with a heat tool, make sure they're really good and dry before I start coloring. Otherwise, I could smudge them and or the ink could run and it will really ruin the whole look. So I'm going to just grab my heat tool, heat this up a little bit and go ahead and start coloring these images. You could also take clear embossing powder if you wanted to and emboss the images and that will seal in that black outline as well. VersaFine ink has such great detailing and you really get all of that fantastic detail of these darling images with that ink. So I really wanted to use it for these cute little girls. You could just as easily stamp these on some smooth white cardstock and color with Copic markers, watercolor paper and color with your watercolors, colored pencils, whatever you like. I'm using the Zigs. I'm not gonna use any water. I'm going to lay down my darker color and then blend it out with the lighter color. You wanna make sure and clean off the tip of your marker fairly often while working with the Zigs this way because the lighter color marker will pick up that darker color and it can transfer it and maybe blend out the image too much and you'll lose that great detail. Now I love how the pumpkin turned out. However, I do wanna mention that it looks a little bit darker in the finished card because I go over it with a, little, a light brown marker in a little bit. Once I started coloring in these girls and adding color to them, I used much more mutum, muted autumn shades than what I felt like the pumpkin was. I felt like it maybe was a little bit more of the bright whimsical look instead of that fallish muted color. So the beige marker, will I will just color over parts of it here in a little bit and darken it up without having to restamp that and recolor. I'm a big fan of trying to work out ways to fix something rather than starting over from scratch. After you have colored and blended out the zigs, if you need to, I just went back in and added some of my dark color back in because I really think it adds some nice shading detail to the image, especially kind of where she's holding that leaf next to her body and things like that. You definitely can do that. I used beige and flesh color for the skin with some pale pink for cheeks. Little ugh looking boots down here at the bottom in shades of brown and oatmeal. That's deep brown and oatmeal for those. Deep browns and oatmeal for her hair as well. I ended up pulling out a lot more markers that colors than I had originally planned. And that was just because these were really fun to color. And I felt like I needed more of an assortment than what I had originally thought I would use. Her little acorn stocking cap is adorable. This is some brown and deep brown. Blend that out, go back in, add some additional detail. It maybe got a little too dark, so I blended it back out with a lighter color. And then deep red and pale rose work perfectly to give you that kind of wine color. So her scarf is gonna be that. Definitely tried to mix and match each of these. And I really loved that color combination so much that the second little girl 
is going to be wearing a top out of this color combination. So lay down the dark color first, blend this out with my lighter color marker. And this is a really pale rose type of color. So on its own, it is not this dark, but these two together are fantastic. Now, a lot of that dark definition kind of got blended out. So I'm going back and adding that back in. Anywhere that I got too aggressive with the darker marker, I can go back over with the lighter one. The markers blend beautifully on the Bristol Smooth cardstock. And really coloring is super fast this way. Have her wearing little denim jeans. This is dull blue and haze blue. Go ahead and add her skin color again with beige and flesh color. And pale pink for the cheeks to pinken, pinken them up a little bit. And her little hat, I decided to make it green. So in shades of pale dawn gray, mid green, and olive green. Little gray shoes here with gray brown and warm gray. And her scarf in some shades of brown. This is going to be brown and oatmeal for her scarf. Her hair is going to be in that um, gray brown 094 color. And I just kept it to the one color really for her hair. You really can't tell a lot. There's not a ton of hair visible. For the third girl, I really had to contemplate what color I wanted to do her dress. Um, so I decided to start with her skin, beige and flesh color again. And while I was working out in my head what color I wanted to go with for her outfit, I tried to do anything that I already knew what color I was gonna use. Um, a lot of times I'll do that. And while I was, I realized I thought green would make a great color for her dress using three colors. This is a pretty large area which I often only use two with the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers or even Copics, but for a large area like this, oftentimes you'll get a nice, a lot more nicer shading and detailing with three. And so I used olive green, mid green, and then pale dawn gray, which the name suggests it's more gray, but and it has a lot of gray in it, but it works really well with these two green colors. A little bit of those blue colors for her little fairy wings, some browns, very light browns for her hair, beige and oatmeal, I believe. And I did go back in with just a little bit of the deep brown to add some additional detail. The brown for her shoes and the stem of the pumpkin, I should mention, I realized I hadn't colored that in yet. And here is that pumpkin that I'm adding the beige color to and it darkens it up immediately, which is perfect. And then for the leaves on the top of her head, I'm gonna go back to that color combination from the first girl, which is brown and light brown. It's kind of a rust color. I really like this color combination. Again, if too much of the detail gets lost once you blend out, I just went over parts of those leaves again with my darker brown color. Now I simply have the bird and the little teeny tiny individual leaves to color in. That's that deep dark brown to add some detail to her hair. Just kind of around her face to help frame it up. The leaves are all going to be in similar shades that I used for other elements on the card. So the deep red and pale rose, mid green, olive green, and brown and light brown and dull blue and haze blue for the little bird with a little bright yellow for its beak. Once I have that done, I wanna die cut my images. Now, what I forgot and didn't realize is the girl image is a solid image and not an outline. If you have done this and didn't die cut it first and stamp it like I did, go ahead and die cut it from a piece of scrap paper, cut a little slit in it, Line it up over your colored image, place that die in place, and you really want to make sure, since you've taken all the time to color it, that your die is in place. So my die shifted. 
So I need to start all over. I do not want to accidentally cut part of this off. Again, I'm gonna line up my outline, the negative space. That little slit I cut in it with scissors is what's gonna make it easy to move. I'm gonna hold it down in the middle and very carefully pull one side away and I did tape it down with some post-it tape so it wouldn't shift, and then pull the other side out. I will go ahead then and run this through the Big Shot die cutting machine, as well as the other images, and it's going to cut them out perfectly. I added some black detail with a black glaze pen to the eyes on the images, and then some white pen detail for some highlights using a white pen. I have die cut a background. I wanted the focus to be on the images. So I went with a white background, but I wanted it to have texture. The Honey Cuts Hexagon Stipple Plate is awesome. I love it. So I die cut this from some smooth white cardstock. I'm attaching all of my cute little images to this, kind of putting the scene all together, and there's not a great place for the greeting. When this happens, what I like to do is take a piece of clear acetate, plastic, transparency, whatever you have. This is some embossable plastic from Judicans. Line up my images, and it's a little hazy because there are divider sheets in the package so that they don't get scratched or don't scratch one another, and I've just left it in place here. And I'm gonna line them up, use my Misty, and do a little two-tone stamping with Stazon ink right on the plastic. So the first phrase that reads, sending a season of, I'm gonna stamp with black Stazon ink. Go ahead and clean that up. I like to use Stazon cleaner right on the stamp to get rid of any residue because Stazon is so sticky. I clean it off with a paper towel and then take a stamp chamois and clean my stamp really well to get off any residual you know, um, residue from the, the ink. I will line up the word blessings next and reevaluate kind of move all of my layers back so that it because it shifted it got stuck the plastic likes to stick ink up the word blessings with white stays on ink and stamp that right underneath I love the look of the two-tone greeting so it's going to read sending a season of blessings so super pretty and it looks fantastic it's still easy to read when you layer it over the images. You could even make this a shaker card if you wanted to. Lots and lots of great ways to use this. Now I cut a frame from an A2 panel of smooth white cardstock using a double stitched frame, the largest from the A2 double stitched frame. I'm putting score tape all around the edges, 1 8 inch score tape. It fits perfectly. I'm going to peel this all off. I've made sure and trimmed down my plastic window to fit right behind this. Go ahead and secure that behind my frame. This is going to disguise my adhesive. This little teeny tiny frame allows me to place this right over the top of my background and it disguises any adhesive so easily. So I'm going to put another layer of score tape around the edges. I'm just doing some final detail here and making sure all my little highlights and things are the way I want them to look before I secure my frame in place. Adding a few extras going over some that maybe faded a little bit. Adding some more detail to the little acorn cap. Things like that. Go ahead and put score tape on the back of my frame and place it right on top of this hexagon stipple background. Once I have my score tape all in place, I'm going to go in with some of the brand new sequin mix. This is Indian Summer and I love layering the sequin mixes and I'm going to attach these right on top of the clear window using some Ranger Multi Matte Medium, layering the elements, and it's going to dress up the card beautifully. Thanks for joining me today for this card featuring the Acorn Sisters stamps and dies. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.